Okay, <clears throat> so what we're going to do now first is we're going to create placeholders so that we can create um, the, the stair rails. <coughs> Alright, for that we're going to create a line, a second line. So tap, press line. See what this line is like. You see the orientation over here on this object. And with this line, we're going to call this place holder. So, <coughs> a few things that we want to do. First of all, we need to get it into the same direction which is in this case not the y direction but the x direction and again I'm going to switch this off by pressing escape in the viewport and the other thing that I want to do because right now it's just scaling in one direction I want to make sure that it's scaling right in the center so for that what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the origin so if we take now a negative 0.5 position for the origin, oh, sorry, that's in the y direction, I need to take this for the x direction, minus 0 0.5, and you see it is right in the middle over here, but it's not stable in the middle, so if I change the size, it's not staying in the middle, and that's something we want to adjust. And for that, if we want to get that, what we need to do is we need to get the distance information to make this in a proper way. So what you can do, because we're in one node, you can select the value over here and with the left mouse button drag it until you're over here and then drop it. And like that make it just a relative channel reference and we see channel distance. Now <coughs> we don't see this in front of it and the reason for that is because we're getting that information from the node itself so we don't have to go out of the node, we don't have to go one level up the symbol you see over here is the same like you see in uh, your explorer in which you can go up uh, in, a, in, a, in a parents that's for controlling how you go in, into uh, folders etc but as again we're gonna use the value from the node itself, it's on the same level and we want to have this negated, we want to have this in a negative direction. And another thing that we want to add is that we're not taking the full value in a neg negative direction, but half of it. Now you can divide by 2, but it's safer to multiply by half. <coughs> it's not only safer, but it's faster, and that's a very common thing. Um, if you're doing some scripting or programming, always try to do the same thing with the, with the multiplication. And multiplication works faster, it's being it's processed faster, that's the first thing. And the safe thing is that if you multiply 0 with 0 0.5, it returns a value of 0. Now if you divide a value of 0 by 2, then you get a problem because you can divide it um, almost infinitely so if if you divide for example 2 by let's say if you divide uh, 2 by 0 then yeah it can go on forever so try to use this it's better okay so if you do this we see it's stuck in the middle and since it's updating now each time the distance As you can see, it stays just right in the center. So that's what we want to have. Now what we want to do as well is we want to make sure that we copy that information right over here. So for each copied uh, stair, we want to have the placeholder as well. So for that we're going to use a merge node. And a merge node allows you to merge two geometry shapes together. So now it's merged. You see we have these extra points 
and we can copy those now so right now we do have these placeholders over here <coughs> okay what am I going to do with these placeholders well I'm going to create some other placeholders some other lines um, but just a few things um, I want to make sure that I have proper orientation so let me think the easiest way to work is that we have for uh, the rails lines which are going straight up and we want to have those straight lines going up over here just as well um, so I'm going to add right here in the Z normals so again we're going to add an attribute by creating that attribute and we're going to use a value over here of 1 we're gonna make a normal like I've done before and we have to set it to vector so right now if we see this this line has normals if we copy this now we see that suddenly everything has gotten black now what is the reason for that? you see over here this node it's complaining it's giving a warning so if you press middle mouse button it says a mismatch of attributes on the input was detected and the reason is because this object now has normals but this object over here doesn't have any normals at all so we need to create normals now to create proper normals for an object like this you'll have to use the facet node and the facet node is an operator which allows you to do all kinds of operations for controlling the normals globally so what we're going to do is we're gonna make the points unique and like that we're gonna have proper normals post compute normals as you can see right now we have all the normals we need and if we check now to get in the merge it's not complaining anymore they both have the same attributes and so now if you go to the copy again everything is just working fine so whenever you see something turning black it means that one of those doesn't have a normal <coughs> and the other has if both both of the objects don't have normals then there's no problem something else when this is giving you this warning sign it can mean all kinds of things but if you check with it the middle mouse button you can see what is wrong so make sure to do this okay next step we're going to use what we see over here to add our supports so let's add right here a tube we're gonna use this object this tube gonna make it much thinner so the radius is going to be smaller now I don't want to have like a different radius for the Z as for, as for the X as for the Z so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag this value over here and make a relative reference copy so that when I adjust this they both are getting the same value and let's make this quite small over here now right here a tube is already centered from the, just from the start now over here I want to have the opposite I want to make sure that this tube is just standing with the bottom part right on this spot so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the height value gonna drop it over here as a relative reference and multiply it by a half alright so there we have it but now I want to make sure that I can copy these tubes on each one of those side points and we now have a small problem because if I'm going to do this again with a copy we 
take this and we copy over here to this part then we see we have like a massive amount of tubes for every point a tube has been created and this is something we don't want to have we just want to have tubes for only those points which are pointing upwards so what we need to do is we need to extract just that shape out of the whole thing that we've copied now to be able to extract we first need to group the whole thing so if we see what we have over here we have this line we're gonna give it a group name and let's name this one place holder place holder if we merge it over here we can still see we have the primitives in the placeholder if we go over here we suddenly have 11 primitives in the placeholder so it has copied the object 11 times and so what we do right now over here is we're going to delete all the objects which are not the placeholder so we take over here the placeholder group now it's just getting deleted the placeholder we're gonna do the opposite we're gonna delete the non-selected and now we have all the points that we need for the placeholder so if we see this we're getting this object but I see we do have a little problem um, let me check right over here do we still have our normals yes we do have the normals but the normals are pointing upwards and that's because the way how they've been copied so we have to change the direction of the vector again and let's make this a value of 1 over here like that so right now this is going to give us a bit much better result so now if we start to combine both of these by just creating a new merge we can combine the stairs together with uh, the parts that we need for uh, <coughs> the rails alright um, now the fun thing is that since we have everything in a procedural network and that it's just giving a complete description of what this is supposed to be that we can still adjust all those things we can adjust for example the width we can adjust the height of this so you all have still separate control over what you want to adjust oops I made a mistake by pressing space okay good now as you can see it's complaining again a mismatch of attributes was detected well the reason is as follows right now these objects over here these are primitives as you can see it's a primitive shape so it's just a mathematical representation of what a tube is and that's important for the renderers uh, again I'm not going to go deeper into this um, but again like we've seen before you can change what type it is for example change it to polygons from the moment it's polygons as you can see it has problems over here it doesn't show up properly so what can you do you can do as before create over here uh, a facet node but what you can do is also the following we can just remove the facet node and move it completely down to one of the latest operations that we're doing because over here everything comes together and now we have normals for everything just in one go with one node 
Now there's something different. What I don't want to have is the following. If I show this smooth shaded, I want to have these stairs sharp, but I don't want to have these small pillars being sharp. So to smooth them out, we're going to use something different. Instead of using unique points, which makes every point giving, uh, which would give every normal, uh, you, every point a unique set of normals. We're going to do the following. We're going to cusp the polygons, and we can, with cusp, we can set an angle, and that angle is going to determine when it starts to interpolate or when it is sharp. So as you can see now, the tubes are smooth, and these panels are sharp. Okay. Um, the following thing, uh, we still need something where people can hold on to. So what we're going to do is we're going to reuse what we have over here. The lines that we have over here is something what we're going to use. And with these lines we have over here, what we're going to do as well is we're going to move them up as much as we have a height over here. So I'm going to add a transform node just here and I'm going to move this upwards and for that I'm going to take the height value right mouse button copy parameter go to the X form and paste the relative references over here so if we merge them all together you see we have the following with this line and I can just adjust what we have over here exactly what I need for uh, these stairs <coughs> okay um, so here we stop on this part so what you've seen is how we can use groups uh, no let's go up again You've seen how we can use a merge node to combine uh, different types of uh, geometry. Um, you've learned about the facet node, how you can use this to create proper normals for the geometry. Um, you've learned how to use a group in combination with the delete node so that you can delete just the parts that you don't need. And over here, We've done a combination with the copy node and then combining everything together and just again making like a lot of connections and interconnections within the nodes to make sure that we have as much as possible uh, things getting uh, things being automated for us. Now in the next part we're going to change this set of lines we have over here into two lines which we're going to use for uh, our staircase and um, we're going to do on top of that we're going to change the normals for these points so that we can make them point in each an opposite direction and that we can stretch them out okay so this is uh, this is this part we'll continue with the next so this is uh, the fourth part and we'll continue with the next.